Welcome to Sheena Power Talk Youth Link, where our redeemed, revived, and transformed guests get real and empowering youth. I'm your host, Sheena Lynn Hansen, and I'm so happy to be here with you today. Today, I have with me an extraordinary woman of God, a woman of God that you may hear chanting down the gates of hell because she declared that Jesus Christ is Lord. Let me tell you, with me today is Evangelist Shade Clark. And listen, your soul is about to be edified. God will be glorified and the devil in hell will be terrified. Where are you going? Stay tuned. We'll be right back. She na power talk. And we are rise and take over territory. We are break some curses lyrically. We are shake some kingdom literally. No show Satan, no sympathy. Young people make we grow spiritually. Stop war with the neighbor physically. Draw for the holy Bible daily. Humble I got feet like baby. Tired for the family in a cemetery. Youths them need guidance mentally. Stop abuse young girls sexually. We need Yeshua in the industry. See it and I try to rally why your destiny. Young girl, keep your identity. Hi, welcome to Sheena Power Talk. It's such a pleasure to have you, Minister Evangelist Shade. Right. How are you? I'm blessed. I'm okay. I'm well. Amen. I'm well. I want you to look into the camera and give us five significant things about yourself. Good morning, everyone. Um, Evangelist Shade here. I'm kind, I'm passionate, I'm jovial, I'm outgoing, and I'm blunt. Those are five words that five words that guide me as i go along if you know me you'll know these words amen. and you know this stuff about me amen Banji, i believe that the bible is the foundation of truth yes so i want to know what is your favorite scripture and what it means to you my favorite scripture is many are the afflictions of the righteous but god will deliver them out of it all why mm -hmm. in christendom now we realize that as soon as somebody gets afflicted mm -hmm. or the afflictions begin to rise the first thing they do is cry cree but if we understand scripture any at all you have to understand that the righteous will go through suffering the righteous will go through heartache tribulations and problem mm -hmm. so a lot of times we stand to declare oh i'm the righteous i'm the redeemer of the lord mm -hmm. but when the afflictions come we run when the affliction come we bow mm -hmm. when the afflictions come we cry cree so this is the verse that brings me every time i buck up on a speed bump or a problem or a challenge i remind myself listen many are the afflictions of the righteous but God himself will deliver us out of it all I don't know about for anybody but I don't mind the affliction I don't mind the suffering I don't mind the pain because the Bible reminds me in Psalm that they will be many hallelujah whoa that is so powerful woman of God uh, glory to God so I love how you say when we, we, we encounter hard times we tend to bow to those hard times and sometimes it's really hard woman of god it's really hard but i think god is looking for faithful people so i love the word that you choose today my thing is now what i want to know is who is evangelist shade clark who was shade before even evangelist who was shade before evangelist a little young girl that will do anything to get some attention mm. if it means i'm gonna go to school and start a fight mm. i'm gonna start a fight if it means i'll be always being a in gossips and mix up and tail bearing and all sort of that whatever it does to get attention i'd have done it but listen shade was on the school choir yeah. shade was playing netball shade was in dance shade was in drama so even though shade had a little trouble side shade still had a side that wanted to do good and um I was always jovial and fun. Um, I remember when I met my husband in high school, my husband now, and I was being me, being vulgar and, and skipping class and sculling, um, sculling classes, all uh, five class in one day. One day he said to me, me no one of Viriego Fikiago show my mother mm. so you see if we are going to continue this behavior is going to have to stop and that's when shade really start to look into herself and realize listen i grew in church my mom died from i was seven i grew in church i knew the principles of church i knew the operation of a church but when i was in the wider world i was not behaving like such mm. 
And when I met this young man and he said that to me, I did a self check and a self search. Mm -hmm. And from that day, my life transformed mm -hmm. from being the shade that needed attention from man to being the shade that was willing to do anything to be a better person. Glory to God. So basically, you were raised with proper Christian values and principles. Was mommy and daddy a Christian? No, mommy died from seven. Daddy was in the world. I was raised with my aunt. And my mm -hmm. aunt got every Sunday morning in his church. Friday night is youth fellowship. Mm -hmm. So, me know about the runnings at church. Right, right. Yes, but sometimes you don't really want to go, but at the only opportunity you get to go do roads. So when them things say you're there at church, you, you don't a man to go be here. Mm -hmm. uh, or, yeah, so church was really the escape route mm -hmm. to go do road, especially on Friday nights. Glory to God. So, woman of God, how you said it was true as a partner, somebody were dating that made you kind of pull up. At what age that was that? That was age 17. So you are, you are saved from age 17? The minute I stepped out of high school, I got baptized. My Baptized, God. not saved. Ooh, love that. Come tell us the about The minute that. I stepped out of high school, I got baptized, not saved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because a lot of people think baptism saved you. Mm -hmm. Was it baptism. any pressure to be baptized? When you uh, yes, woman of God, what do you mean? And my boyfriend, young and nice. Mm -hmm. I, all right, the first time I was to be baptized, I went to my big sister's house and I said, Listen, they write down my name for baptism, you know, but me not ready. Mm -hmm. She said, Okay, don't go. And I called that one. Mm -hmm. When I went back to church, I was so ashamed because I, I always do praise and worship, you know. Listen, I was always on the praise team, I was so ashamed. and I said, listen, God, when you are ready for me, I'm ready. Mm -hmm. And when I finished high school, I remember I got an encounter. Yes. And I was among one of my friends, and she was a Christian, and she woke me up 2 o'clock one morning, and she said, get up and pray. Mm -hmm. I said, well, this girl, I wake me up 2 o'clock to get up and pray. Mm -hmm. And I got up, and I obeyed, and the Saturday I went to a fasting, and I got filled at that fasting before baptism. Mm -hmm. And I called my... I was at my boyfriend's house at the time, and I was lying in bed, and the Lord gave me this song, Jermaine Edwards, Johnny. Because mm -hmm. I prayed to God when I finished school for a job that I can go to church on Sunday, mm -hmm. for, for um, money so I can pay my tithes, for all the things and everything that I prayed and asked God for. I went into a teaching job, and I was not qualified. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a diploma. I didn't have a certificate. I had nothing, mm -hmm. and I went straight into teaching. I got my Saturdays and my Sundays out, but the minute that began to happen, I stepped out. Mm -hmm. And it was no longer church for me, but I couldn't wait on the weekends to go to the boyfriend. Mm -hmm. And one night I was lying down in the bed after I got baptized. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit said, I'm ready for you now, for real. Ooh. And I said to my boyfriend, listen, this stops here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to serve God for real. Mm -hmm. But I know about being a Christian and, and still having sex out of marriage. I know about being a Christian and in a battery ride and still have a party. Mm. I know about calling myself a Christian and still telling lies, still gossiping, still doing everything that people would, would think that Christians must not do. Mm. So I was baptized but was not saved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. And some people say saved but not delivered. Saved but not delivered. Right. So you're out there doing a thing, but it, it was one specific night where God said, I'm ready for you, for real. What was your response? You say you even spoke to your boyfriend at the time. What was his response? Well, he, he didn't take it good enough because, you know, say, the things that I'm going to stop saying on. Yes. So he, he, he never really um, took it well, but I knew what I had to do. Mm. So it was his either you're going to come with me or yeah. you're going to go. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I told him the night, he said to me, Shads, what do you mean? Me say, I'm going to serve God for real. So all of this dalios is going to have to stop. And I remember like for three weeks, four weeks, we didn't have any conversation. And I was at school one day teaching and I saw a message, let's get married. Ooh. And I said, check the number because <laughs> I don't mean one text. Yeah. So, so check the number. Yeah. He said, Shads, I'd rather to have you and you serving God than to lose you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that was it from there. And you are married to him until this day? Yeah, man. Last Whoa. month, me, we celebrated 10 years. Whoa, so how, all right, how, how, how is marriage being a Christian, a devoted Christian, sit down in a God now, and not only sit down, but God has anointed you for the assignment. How has that been? 
All right, well, I must say today that I have one of the most supportive partners. If he wasn't, if he didn't have to go to work today, he'll be sitting in one of those seats. Yes. I do not do ministry alone. He's always there. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when he realizes the burden that ministry brings, he says, Shads, you don't know you do this, you know. Mm -hmm. God would have to give you the strength. Last year, I went through a, a, a very rough patch mm -hmm. where ministry and church is concerned. Whoa. And he said to me, if I did me, me couldn't manage it. Me no know how you do it. But mini marriage has never been a strain where ministry is concerned. He has never um, stopped me from doing ministry. Mm -hmm. He has never said, listen, don't go today because me need you to go here. So no, it was always a ministry first. Mm -hmm. So he would never set any appointment for days that he knows I'd have to go out and do ministry or days that he knows I'd have to do fasting. He's always supportive. I won't get him to come to church every Sunday. Mm -hmm. But because he's a police officer, mm -hmm. but when he is available, he comes and he supports. So marriage doesn't burden my ministry. Amen. Glory to God. So woman of God, you spoke of now being solid in Christ, being concrete. Now, by then you're in church. Did you start working, doing ministry at that time? And you mentioned, you know, it was going through something. Was it like a church or was it, what was the burden that ministry had put on you on surrendering to God? All right, so from, I, I love to sing. I, yes. I, I'm a worshiper. If you give me the mic and say, choose between um, worshiping and preaching, I'm going to worship the entire mm. night. Um, and a lot of people say, well, you preach well. I'm a worshiper at heart. I'd rather do a night of worship than a night of preaching. Mm -hmm. So I, whatever, I was at evangelistic temple. I was doing worship, mm -hmm. back up lead. And then when I move on to faith deliverance, lighthouse, prophetic ministry, I was a worshiper just the same. I yes. never stopped worshiping. But I know, I, people don't have to tell you that there's a calling on your life. Yes. I know that there was a calling on my life to do evangelism. Mm -hmm. So my sister, Pastor Zania Vasnani, she ordained me an evangelist. And I was still just doing worship. Yes. I'll meet with people and I'll tell them about God. Come love talk about God, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't debate, but I love to talk about God. So I, I have always been doing ministry but the thing about ministry is um minister you can be in ministry and still messy and i thought i was at that place mm -hmm. so even though i was doing ministry i was still gossiping mm -hmm. i was still tailbearing I, I listen i was lying Mm -hmm. I, and I don't need anybody to tell me that I'm a liar. Me no say me did lie. You know, tell nothing for me make up a lie. And I was doing ministry. Mm -hmm. Last October, I, I went through through a little problem where, where church and ministry was concerned. And I, I had to take some me time. So I, I pulled back and begin to read the word. Mm -hmm. Because the problem now in Christendom, on, a lot of people God. don't know the word. Yes. And if you don't know the word, you cannot be an effective minister or an effective leader. So I started reading the word for real. I have a friend, he said to me, Clarky, become a student of the word. Yes. And when you become a student of the word, the things that bother you now, you'll realize that they, they don't really mean nothing in the sight of God. Yes. So I begin to read the word and begin to go through my deliverance process mm -hmm. so i can tell you that even though i was i've been doing ministry since 17 it is since last year that i really stepped in what god really had for me i really step into purpose i really step into my calling i really step into who god called me to be because i was doing ministry but i was messy and a lot of people would be afraid now to mm. tell you that part that i'm doing ministry and i'm messy i'm doing things that are not of god mm. but the lord told me daughter don't wait on people to expose you expose yourself because the thing is when people expose you then they have something on you but when you expose yourself they can say listen and this come from the woman of God mouth. I was a liar, my sister. Yeah. I was a tail bearer and I was a gossiper. And when I begin to read the word for real, mm. the Lord pulled me consecrate me build me again speaking to me again motivate me again and the lord said to me listen you're going to keep quiet until i tell you to open your mouth Ooh. and for a period of time i'll say to the people around me that were motivating me the lord said i must keep quiet until he tell me to open my mouth mm. i was ready to be done away with ministry hey, going on, but it takes great courage and i want to say take great courage because as you said we, we 
hard to be honest about where we are at at the part at a particular time and for you to sit here and say i was a liar i was at many christian now do that you know them now do that them know why i know them just living night and think it is okay people gossip and think it is okay but when i listen to you say you go into the word no the word is the only thing that we read that reads us and if the word and the word transforms us i guess say you're going to the word when you realize what you were you identified it you were honest to god about it and you went in the word no i want you to elaborate and it's the resting period where you said you come away with god because sometimes we work we work we work and we're still in our mess and we don't come away but when we look at the life of jesus christ he had to come away every time not because it was messy but because when we come away god download and fix things in us so tell us a little bit about the coming away with god God. all right when, when, when i was there and i was broken and i was going to be bitter and the lord said to me do not allow this to make you bitter mm. allow it to make you better yes and when i was there and i people would call me and encourage me and motivate me and i remember one night there was a particular church that called me to do an all-night prayer meeting to minister the word mm. and i was broken and i said to them listen me no, me no, me can't bother with that church something here and instantly the Lord says, Shade, it is not about you mm -hmm. and it will never be about you. Yes. And if you are not willing to do it, I can find somebody else to use. Mm -hmm. And after I do that, meaning the Lord said, pull away. And the Lord gave me Psalm 91. He that dwells in the secret place. The problem with Christian now, you know, is that we are only visiting the secret place. We are not dwelling mm -hmm. in the secret come place on, of the no. Most High God. So it's just a visitation. So when you visit and you hear something, you come back and you elaborate and you stress but in this season god said to me listen i don't want you to visit the secret place shade i want you to dwell in the secret place of the most high god and that is what i started to do i no longer visit but i dwell and the lord said to me i am going to take you through a process mm -hmm. and after i take you through this process offense won't be anything again yes um church earth won't do anything to you again um, gossiping won't do anything to you again. Unforgiveness will not have anything on you. God said, when I'm done with you, I'm going to set you. When I was, when I pull away, mm -hmm. I said, God, I want you to pour in me everything that you have to pour inside of me. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I, 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 I was in prayer, I, I was flat on my belly one morning and the Lord said to me, when you are done, the shade that they knew will be no more. Mm -hmm. The Lord said, when you are finished, mm -hmm. I am going to put you out there. I'm going to catch up. Listen, I know that I was going to be here, you know. Mm -hmm. At the first show that I watched with you, I remember the Lord said, you're going to be sitting with that host one day. Yes. That's how the Lord deal with me. And when I was in prayer, I, I begin, the Lord, the Lord changed the tongues. The Lord changed the way Ooh. I approach situation. The Lord changed the way I look at people. I used to be one that loved to talk down pastors when we see them in the air. And I remember when I was in the secret place, the Lord said to me, David could have killed Saul and many occasions. But every time that David gets Saul to get to take out Saul, David said, I will not touch the Lord's hey, anointing. The I am going to leave him to God. I was in a situation that I was ready to take down anything called pastor bishop and apostle and the lord said if you think your body you open your mouth against one of them if you think your body you say anything bad about one of them and i remember when i said mr about god so me alone to take all of the pain and all of the earth and i me alone to take all of the damage the lord said keep quiet mm. this battle is not yours yes mm. and i relaxed my sister and i listen i never know i could have prayed so much mm. sometime in the bathroom and my husband said shadzena come out now i knew what it meant now to go into your prayer closet go lock up and pray mm. and talk to god mm. i know what it meant now to sit down and if god not tell you to get up you know get up mm. i know what it meant to be hungry and want kfc and burger king but god said listen lock your belly lock your mouth it's time to sit down in me to hear from me mm. when i was in the secret place i had to deny a lot of calls i had to pull away from a lot of people i had to stop talking a lot of stuff because god was bringing me through a purification season did i get everything right no but each time i feel like i'd go ahead and god god would listen shade remember it's not about you i am dealing with you because when you come out hey hallelujah when you come out when you bounce back when i catapult you mm. the enemy will not have anything on you because everything that is to be said about you will already be out there the lord said keep quiet just stay in the secret place mm. and what is happening now you know 
A lot of people are busy doing the work of God, but don't know God. Mm -hmm. And that's a fact. Because them now going to the secret place, mm -hmm. so them, they, they, them, them eloquent in speech. Mm -hmm. And because they go to school and they get some subject, you can read and put the story in place. Yes. But when last have you received a real my word? Mm -hmm. When last have you received a mm -hmm. word from the throne room? When last have somebody been healed under your ministry? Mm -hmm. When last has somebody been delivered? So that is the things that God did to me. The Lord said, when I put you back out there, sign and wonder will mm -hmm. follow you. When I put you back out there, you're going to open your mouth and there will be instant healing. The Lord said, you won't have to lay hands on anybody, my daughter. But when I send you, I will not send you. And a man will not send you. A man will not be able to say, and me anoint you, and me ordain you. But they have to say, look what Jesus did. Glory to God. Woman, I'm going to love how you mentioned that many persons know. They preach the word, they teach the word, but they really do not know God. And in this time, we realize that many preachers know it's like they preach the message to excite the flesh and everybody jump up and hot and fiery but it excites the flesh but it doesn't change the person and and many people um um think that goosebumps and cold bumps that's the holy spirit and that's it and that's not it that's not the only way that the holy Pri spirit shows his presence when the holy spirit comes it changes you so if you preach a word that you was up at and fiery within the sermon when you go home you're supposed to feel transformed but you can't go home and do the same thing so i really agree with you say sometimes people just do it off of intellect but not the holy spirit not the anointing and the anointing breaks the yoke we need that anointing we need that back we just we tired to hear the prosperity thing you're gonna get this you're gonna get that we want the we want here the um woman be healed woman do what made um who and woman really is whole that is what we want so i really i really love that you mentioned that and just coming away because sometimes even jesus had to come away but sometimes we feel like boy if we come away with platform i go go down with church i go go down this i go go down but when every time i realized when jesus came away he come back more powerful no you said it you went away you spent time with god you dwell in the secret place and you came back stronger so i thank you for even sharing sharing that you know glory to god no vanji I, I i i i watched you on tiktok and um god has blessed you with a platform that reach many people globally and i i listened to the word profound words that you preach what influenced you what you know pushed you to start a tiktok ministry my God. And just in, just in case you don't know, tell me a TikTok name. I'm Evangelist Shad. Yes. So you come over TikTok, just look for Evangelist Shad. You're going to see me at the motivational video with my ear pull up or in a one big t-shirt because that's me, Evangelist Shad. Right. Yeah. So, all right. Last year, I was at home and my sister-in-law was there. A, a family of us were coming from a family member funeral and she said to me, you're always on Facebook encouraging and motivating people. I think TikTok would be good for you. Mm -hmm. And I said, listen, you know, me can't bother with TikTok mm -hmm. and me, me, me not have time for that and for grow the account and all of that. She said, all right, let me make the page for you. And she made the page and she said, listen, there are some grow hosts on TikTok. Mm -hmm. We're going to go in on their platform and grow your page. But for the meantime, you need to make motivational videos. Just like when you write it on Facebook, just use the audio yeah. on TikTok. And I remember when we were there, I was in my house making motivational videos. And my husband would be on the city. I look over and me like, no man, this TikTok thing grab you. And I said, listen, I have to grow my account because I have to reach 1K for go live. Mm -hmm. And... They play them for wash and me I grow the account. Um, my daughter fi get taken me I grow the account until the account reach one k. And one night I was on the veranda and the Holy Spirit said to me, mm -hmm. "Go live." Mm -hmm. And when the Holy Spirit said to me, "Go live," I tried to not listen. Mm -hmm. And I remember about five minutes after that, I hear the Holy Spirit strongly again, "Go live." Mm -hmm. I said, "God, what would you want me to speak on?" Mm -hmm. The Lord said to me, Anna and Penina. Mm -hmm. And I said, Anna and Penina, God. The Lord said, yes. Because mm -hmm. there are some women over there that are waiting to hear you. Mm -hmm. And hear your story. Mm -hmm. And I went live, my sister. And for about one hour in the live, it's two person. Mm -hmm. My two sister-in-law. And I was sitting there and in my mind, I said, yeah, come on for this year, man. Mm -hmm. I can't sit down and say the preaching people who hear me preach already. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, don't move. 
and in three minutes it went from two persons to 322 persons wow. that was my first night doing the live yes. from two persons to 322 persons and I hear God say pump the word now hey, and when I begin to pump the word and pump the word it went from 300 and had to 500 and that was my first night doing the live yeah. and when the live I, I preach about Anna and Penina when the live was over I had persons reaching out pastor um, they say I have PCOS pastor I've been trying to give my husband a child pastor and I said God what are you allowing me to do on TikTok and the Lord said watch me for everyone that reached out to you pray for them yeah. I remember that was last year October mm -hmm. no one of October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May. Who not have them baby already pregnant? Mm -hmm. The ones that were told you would not be able to conceive. Mm -hmm. Who not have the baby already pregnant? Because I have a story where five doctors told me, listen, you will never be able to conceive. Mm -hmm. And because of that, that God did in front of the face of the Peninas, God has given me a burden for women that are told that, listen, you won't be able to conceive. Mm -hmm. So the, when I was there, the Lord said, listen, this is a platform that I'm going to allow you to use to bring change, deliverance, and transformation. Yeah. And that is what it has been doing. I have people call me from as far as Ghana. Mm -hmm. um, some of the, the, the countries, at the first me hear about them on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And they're calling not only to say pray for me, but with testimonies. Mm -hmm. And that's what the Lord told me that he's going to do. The Lord said, at the sound of your voice, you won't have to touch them. Mm -hmm. But deliverance will be theirs. Hallelujah. Healing will be theirs. I, I, I remember um, in, in April, I went to Kingston to pick up a bag and there was a flight attendant coming out. And I realized the flight attendant was coming towards me. So I said, why this lady coming towards me like that? She said, evangelist, yeah? So, and she said, listen, you prophesied this job in my life on TikTok. Yes. She was from Mexico. She said, you call me by name and tell me that I was going to be a flight attendant. Yeah. And she hugged me and for the entire time, the people them at the airport that look like, what is going on? And when I was heading home, the Lord reminded me, the Lord said, listen, your name will be great. Amen. Amen. The Lord said, your name will be great. Amen. And that is what I live by today, my sister. Mm -hmm. Not that my name will be great, but I'm here to do the work of him who sent me. Amen. And that is my only aim and mission on this earth realm. Amen. I rejoice with you and I celebrate you, woman of God, because I've seen the impact that you are creating. I've seen not only that, every time you probably feel down, we'll go up on TikTok and we'll get our evangelist shut up, shut up, fire. And it's a beautiful thing. Not only that, you're winning souls, prayer persons are giving their life to God, they are being healed. There are so many things been going on and I celebrate your ministry. But no, I want you to look into the camera and talk to some young people that, you know, struggling with some of the same things that you was just talking about. Or just to be settled and just serve God good and properly. Because some of some of the young people know them are player. One foot in, one foot out. Look in the camera and tell. Well, this afternoon, I, I have a passion for young people. I have the, the, the privilege to work with a lot of young people over the years in ministry. And it is not something that is easy, I must say. But the Bible tells us to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things shall be added. In this season, in order for us to see what God really has for us, we have to go in a, in a, in a seeking mood of seeking God and the things that God have in store for you. I know it's hard because some of us have our little boyfriend and you're telling that sex um, before marriage is sin and you're told that you can't wear sex certain things and you, you can't act in, in a particular way. But what I want to encourage you and tell you in this season, the Holy Spirit is the one that pulls, the Holy Spirit is the one that chains, the Holy Spirit is who deliver and the Holy Spirit is who set people free. What you have to do is to develop a relationship with God for yourself, not with persons that are telling you about God only, not with people that are preaching about God only, but you're going to try to know God for yourself. The Bible said none cannot come unless they are drawn and if you are not drawn then you you will not see the, the need to really walk in the path of god and and the path that god has called you to to really walk in i want to encourage somebody today the road may be rocky the road may be hard but i always tell somebody it's best you mess up in christ than mess up in the world and i always tell some young people that i said pastor i want to get married it's best to wait long than married wrong god have things for you to do while you're a 
single. God has things for you to do. He said, young man, I call upon you because you are strong. The time for you to do ministry is now. The time for you to echo the name of Jesus is now. The time for you to stand is now. The time for you to let the enemy know that you are rooted and grounded is now. You will not get it perfect every time. You will not do what they want you to do. You will not speak how they want you to speak. But if you make your prayer be God, I need an encounter. That encounter will change you. That encounter will transform you. That encounter will cause you to look into things from a different point of view. Might I share my testimony with some people? Years ago, I was told you will never be able to conceive. You will never be able to conceive. And the doctors that I love, doctors that I don't know, I'll travel to many places just to get some good news about conception. They said, Mrs. Scott, we've never seen your situation before. And when they told me they've never seen my situation, I said, but I have a young husband. My husband a police. So oh, we are going to do this. The Lord said to me, all I needed to do is fast. I went into fasting. Listen, I lose so much weight. Because I said, God, you have to prove these people wrong. I walk in my community, woman of God, and people would look at me and say, you know, I give them on a baby. You know, I give them on a baby. Man, give up. That was the name I was calling my community. And the Lord said to me, all I want you to do is be still. About a year after that, I, I was at school because I'm a teacher. And when I was there, I, I started feeling some cervical pain. And one of the nurses said, let's do a pregnancy test. I said, no, don't waste it. She said, come, let's do the pregnancy test. And I was pregnant. Mm. One month after that, I went on that severe attack. The enemy wanted to drive me crazy. I ran from my school, I ran from my home, I ran from my husband. Mm -hmm. I, I started having warfare with the enemy. Demons would come in for my husband to sex me off. And on a nightly basis, one night I hear the Lord say, Open your mouth in your house and declare that it's done. Hey. And I open my mouth and I begin to worship God. I said, Devil, you don't live here. Devil, you don't have any space here. Devil, we can't accommodate you here. And I remember my entire household was looking at me like you're crazy. The night I went to my bed, I, I, I died. My spirit left my body. I was literally looking down at my body. I said, God, you can't kill me yet. I've not yet fulfilled my purpose on the earthly realm. My God Almighty. And when I got up in the morning, I said to my sisters, you know that last night I died. And they said to me, but Shade, you give up on life. And I opened my mouth and I declared, until I fulfill my God-given purpose, no devil out of hell can remove me. No devil out of hell can put any sickness on me. No devil out of hell can curse me. And I remember that day, I looked to the heavens and I said, God, I'm yours as of today. Anything that you want to do with me, you do it. Huh? So that's why now I don't mind the church hurt. Huh? I don't mind the persecution. Huh? I don't mind the conspiracy. Huh? I don't mind what the enemy did. Huh? Because I know huh, if I suffer with him, huh, I shall reign with him. Huh? I want to encourage somebody today. Huh? A young girl, a young man that might be saying, I cannot do this. Huh? At the age of 17, I started the journey. I did not get everything right. Do not allow them to tell you you have to be perfect to be in Christendom. You're going to mess up. But when you mess up, you cannot give up. I love David because he did not do everything right. But he got down on his knees and he said, cast me not away from your presence, God, and take not the Holy Spirit from me. David was saying, you can take the wife, you can take the children, take whatever you want, but I need the Holy Spirit. The problem today in Christendom is that a lot of people are moving without the Spirit of God. A lot of people are speaking without being told. And that's why we find so many people are afraid of Christendom. Yeah. But I want to tell somebody this morning, Mako Shiadabako Sai, Lebo Shiadabako Shiando Namako Sai, that God is able to do all things. Hallelujah. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord thy God will deliver you out of it all. Mm. The Bible said, after you've suffered a while, yes. a lot of you are going through church earth. And because of that, you, you, you don't want anything to do with church. You don't want anything to do with the, the church people. But I want to tell somebody, God didn't do you anything. 
And what you are doing now, it's not for man, but it's for the glory of God. Young people, get up, stand up, and do what God called you to do. Ministry sometimes can be stressing, and it can be hard. But seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all his righteousness, and all other things shall be added unto you. Glory to God. Woman, I gotta thank you for being here, but I wouldn't feel comfortable if I didn't allow you to just give us one minute of prayer. I need you to give us one minute of prayer. So look in this camera and give us one minute of prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you. We exalt your name this morning for who you are. Oh God, you are great. You are mighty. You are excellent. You are the way maker. You are the miracle worker. You are the promise keeper, God. You are the bomb in Gilead. Father, this morning as we come before you, we put ourselves before you, God. We pray for a cleansing. We pray for purification, God. Father, forgive us of sins known and unknown. Father, this morning, oh God, we thank you, God, for life. We thank you for health. We thank you, God, for strength. We thank you for your grace, your mercy, and your tender kindness. Father, we thank you even for this platform. We thank you for the woman of God that have been washed, cleansed, and sanctified. And decided that I'm going to put messages out in the world to let people know, even though you mess up, you cannot give up. Father, I pray you divine coverage over her life and the life of her family, the life of her ministry, God. I speak, oh God Almighty, for supernatural breakthrough, God. I speak, God Almighty, that you will cover her on her going out and on her coming in, I speak, oh God Almighty, that as she go, you will renew her mind, oh God. You will, oh God Almighty, speak to her every time she feels low. Help her, mighty God, to carry on with this that you've given her to do. Father, I put Jamaica land we love before you. Oh God, we see the problem, we see the crime. Oh God Almighty, we see everything that is going on. But oh God, we bind up every day diabolical order of hell. We blind up every plan of hell, God. Oh, God Almighty, every set up from hell concerning our land. Oh, God Almighty, our national anthem say, eternal Father, bless our land. We pray for a blessing over Jamaica land we love. We pray for divine coverage, God. We pray, oh God Almighty, that your people that are called by your name, God, will begin to humble themselves seek your fears and pray oh God almighty and turn from their wicked ways oh God because this land need a healing father we put the, the house of parliament before you oh God almighty we come against corruption father we pray for your spirit to linger in that place in the name of Jesus father I put the leaders that you have called to lead your people before you apostles pastors missionaries, bishops, evangelists God, I pray oh God almighty for a supernatural encounter, I pray God almighty they will not speak oh God to palpitate the pulse of your people, but when they open their mouths God there will be deliverance there will be healing, there will be breakthrough, oh God you tell us in your word that greater works we shall do I pray God almighty that greater will be now. Huh? I pray God Almighty huh? that deliverance will be now. Huh? I pray God Almighty huh? that healing will be now. Huh? I pray God huh? that breakthrough will be now. Huh? Oh God Almighty. Huh? I pray God huh? that our altar will become altar huh? instead of platforms and stages. Huh? But your people God huh? will go to the altar and cry out again. Huh? Oh God Almighty your people huh? will go to the altar and lie down on their bellies again huh? oh God almighty huh? I pray God huh, for a new wind in the churches huh? oh God almighty huh? I pray God that your people huh, will stand in the name of Jesus Christ Amen. we pray for our children God almighty that you will cover them father you say suffer the little children to come unto me yes, and forbid them not for such is the kingdom of heaven yes, I put them before you this morning God yes, and I pray for divine blood coverage oh God almighty 
Oh God, I pray today, God Almighty, that you will show yourself strong, God. Yes. We understand it's not by might nor by power, but it's by your spirit. Move by your spirit, God, and let your will be done. Father, we give you praise this morning. We give you honor and we give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. and amen. Amen. Thank you so much, woman of God. Listen to me. Such a pleasure meeting you. Such a power pack, powerful. Let me tell you something. I hope you listen to this word today and take it because there was a lot of gems and there was a lot of information to take it and to practice. Guys, I love you, woman of God. I love you and thank you so much. Power gang, I don't know. We don't care. Nobody. Day. No fool, fool people not care. Okay, people were up there nineteen. So God bless you and stay connected. Love you. She na power talk. Hey, Power Gang, remember to get your book on Amazon today, today, today. No other day but today. You can get it in Kindle form and you can get it in paperback form. And if you are in Jamaica and you want a copy of this amazing book, The Crown and the Cross, listen to me. Call me at 1-876-429-6004. Listen, Power Gang, you must have one of these books. Come on now, Crown and the Cross. Hey beauties and cuties, thank you so much for being a part of Sheena Power Talk Youth Link. I trust that your soul is edified, Satan is terrified, and God is glorified. If you want to be a part of this amazing move, this divine move, you can always call me or contact me on any social media handles. Don't keep that story to yourself. Let it out. Let yourself be free and free somebody else. Share your story today on Sheena Power Gang. Listen to me, Power Team. Power gang, we are cause an eruption in other earth. We are called for revival, and God has set the nigga and broke out in our life. In Jesus' name, let it be well. God bless you. And please remember, if you do want to sow, if you do want to help this ministry monetary, you can always contact me. You can always get me through Cash App or other different means like Western Union, MoneyGram, anything and any way you want to sow and make an offering to what God is doing i would really appreciate it there are things that we need as we develop and we trust that you will be generous to us as the lord will lead you thank you so much for making it sheena power gang you don't know how big things are going on sheena power gang and power gang gonna lead god bless you god keep you